ASUS is a free, open, device-independent color management and image interchange system that enables creation of digital masters suitable for long-term archiving. So another way of looking at ASUS is that it's the digital replacement for the infrastructure that film provided us in production, mastering, and long-term archiving. Now I'll tell you what ASUS is not. Because people ask us, well, what is ASUS? How do I get my hands on ASUS? Well, it's not a software application that you can download and run. You can't just double click on a website and get it. It's not a workflow. It's there to help you build your own workflows. And it's not a look. Uh, the look is determined by the filmmaker, by the director, cinematographer, colorist in, in some cases, but it's really the, the, the creative leadership of the, the production that determines the look. ASUS does not do that for you. Well, let's come back to what ASUS is specifically. It's a suite of encoding specifications. So how do you record the zeros and ones, encode the zeros and ones that make up the pixels on the screen? It's a set of transform definitions and guidelines, so how you bring your imagery into the system and send it back out, uh, and, and guidelines for how you do that. Metadata definitions, because we saw in the film system, you do need metadata definitions for a system. It's an archive-ready image data and metadata container specification. Actually, there's more than one of those. It's a set of developer tools to enable product and, and pipeline designers to integrate these technologies into their products and services. And it's a set of standard, standards, already standardized by SIMPTE and soon by ISO. Where do we stand today? Um, like I said, a lot more you know, um, companies outside of the visual effects world adapt ASUS, so the onset um, side is being sort of ported to ASUS, which is great. And DI is starting to make use a lot more of ASUS. So, Really, these sort of transforms effectively um, kind of go away at that point, and we are in the, in the benefit of like having a really unified ASUS workflow from front to end, not just in visual effects. Um, lastly, like I said, uh, you know, it's a CG-friendly color behavior now, so really sort of the, the issues that we kind of found out over time, you know, they're being basically sort of um, solved for us, and, and it, it's, it's of great use. Um, Standardized screen representation, obviously a huge benefit. Everyone is seeing the same picture, especially if you deal with um, clients. Um, they, you know, visual effects is such a color sensitive sort of work and environment that you find yourself and you want to make sure that everyone is seeing the same picture in the same way that you have the same conversation and, and the same judgment. Um, so where do we stand today? At the moment, uh, at NPC, we have like two larger productions that are, you know, fully in ACES, fully ACES turnover. It's King Arthur and uh, Miss P. It's a rather long name, so I'm not going to read it out loud, um, which is a Tim Burton movie. Um, all productions have moved to ACES CG for the textual side of things and our HDIs. That is still up today, really the standard, um, to remain show agnostic. And NPC as a company really encourages to, yeah, use ACES, you know, throughout the entire pipeline for the onset side as well as the DI, because we see the huge benefit of like having the unified sort of color management across the whole process. Um, here I have a scheme uh, of the ACES framework or the ACES system uh, um, and the part that affects um, us as a colorist uh, uh, mainly. So as you probably might know, on the left side you see that the source footage um, today nowadays uh, pro um, mostly from digital cameras gets converted to the common ACES color space via the input device transforms. And this ACES color space, as also mentioned before, is a high dynamic range and wide gamut color space, which means that these transforms can be without a loss of image quality. They can be done, and so all the footage um, gets converted to one or conformed to one unified color space. Then the graded images, the graded ACES images, get uh, con transformed on the output side um, and tone mapped to the dynamic range and the characteristics of the um, output display, let's say a projector calibrated to DCI-P3 or a video display um, calibrated to REC-8086, um, for example. And here on the bottom I added something um, for future color spaces that are uh, in progress or uh, some of them already done. So that's what's happening. What does this mean for me um, as a colorist? So um, in my, my philosophy is that if a machine can something do better than a human being, so for example me uh, um, as a colorist, then I think the machine should do the job. And one big example of this is uh, the matching of different camera color spaces. So this for me is just a technical process uh, to get those uh, different cameras to match. And I think my job is to apply the creative look um, and ACES helps a lot on, uh, on this side. 
And on the other side, uh, we have the output um, with the um, um, tone mapping from high dynamic range to the dyna lower dynamic range nowadays uh, of the displays. And this also happens in a very pleasing and from my aesthetic point of view, um, very nice way. So there it also helps a lot. And uh, with this tone mapping happening on the output side, this means that when I open a project and I use the ACES system, the images look right when I start. So they look roughly like they looked on the set and you don't have a really washed out or desaturated image um, where you then first start to apply all your curves and stuff to get the images look right and then uh, work further for the creative look. So uh, from my point of view, it's a really optimal starting point for the color grading. And the most important thing I think on the output side is that ACES is an HDR and wide gamut color space as mentioned before. So if you're having a show, uh, working on a show today and you're rendering out an ACES master, if you wanna remaster it, for example, to HDR or something in one or two years, it, you don't have to start at the beginning because the full dynamic range of the camera is still inside the master. You have the full gamut, nothing is lost. You're not limited to the, dis the display you used for the color grading. So probably you will also have to do a trim pass and maybe it will be a little bit more work for this trim pass because you're dealing with a yeah, very different display, but it, you don't have to start from the beginning to do the whole film again. Um, Deliverance Creek was my first period film in the United States, more than 25 years after I left the Netherlands. I saw Aces as a big playroom where I could bring in any format to play with and get it out of that room unchanged. The room was big, 16-bit, 30 stops, dynamic range, and every visible color in the spectrum. But everybody said, uh, oh, it's not ready yet, uh, too uh, complex, too early, except uh, uh, Photochem's color team uh, said, uh, why not? And we decided together to try on this production, on this production to apply an ACES workflow from acquisition to the final uh, format. When I started my final color corrections, every shot showed up exactly as we had created it on the set. What was necessary, because the networks had given me only two days for the final color corrections. Um, so I was in, in trouble. So one or two days for a one and a half hour um, uh, period piece with tr quite a complex uh, approach was not that much. If you compare it with Mad Max, who uses nine months for the digital intermediate. So it was not really a lot. Normally I, and normally I lose already two days of color corrections in the beginning just to damage control to get my original colors back. Uh, but here, the right colors, the contrast and density showed up immediately. And I could start directly doing the just subtle adjustments, the adjustments which, we, which you want to do in the DI. You, you want to do the little adjustments and all these fantastic things you can do in a DI session, you want to do that as much as possible for the time given. So there were two days, not a lot. Uh, and, and thanks to the ACES uh, problem, I could indeed finish my work that, as I had imagined it in the short time that was given to me. The film got this year an, an ASC nomination for Best TV Movie, which I never would have gotten without ACES. The Living Squeaks had a complex period look on a very low budget and an extremely tight schedule. But if you know what you want, ACES is your buddy and can help you through the entire process from pre-visualization to distribution, archiving far into the future, with confidence and without any damage control. Thank you. Mm -hmm.